Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. Joe Klimzeski and Adam Atkinson, episode three in our series on best prep foods turning to fat. And I'll admit the first book I wrote, Adam, kind of coming out of the 80s and 90s, of course, we were all into flaxseed oil and things like that because it's going to help build testosterone levels in your body and it's omega-3 and, and all those good things. And then we kind of went through a low fat craze and then back to keto and, you know, this, some, some things just kind of get pushed to the wayside. Um, but more and more research is coming out just prolifically showing that lower fat, keeping some carbs in is better for muscle building, muscle retention, losing body fat. So we, I personally want fat to be low to moderate for somebody in prep. Um, but do we still have room for things like that? You know, essential fatty acids, good fats, omega threes, as well as even some whole food fats like egg yolks and beef once in a while. What's, what's your perspective on all that? I think that using some things like fish oils can be really good for heart health. So, you know, I do utilize those with some of my clients post lab work. Uh, it's just a good, friendly recommendation for them to take and uh, might lower their cholesterol a little bit overall. So I do utilize those. Outside of that, I'm not really into the flaxseed, but you are correct. There was definitely that craze where there were all the meal plan coaches putting flaxseed on everybody's plan. Uh, but you do have to be careful. Fish oils can oxidize and it can actually... Uh, make the problem worse. So you do want to make sure that you get good, high quality supplementation if you do take that stuff. But from a fat perspective, um, I typically let my people, you know, choose their fats wisely. And I feel like fats are one of the macronutrients that's maybe less lied about for the most part. However, there's all these nut butters coming out that taste amazing that have, you know, whey protein in it. And I'm finding that those slow down digestion a lot for some of my clients, or I feel like the labels have to be off because it seems like when I pull this stuff out of their diet, they start losing a little bit faster. So, um, you know, some of that American dream nut butter and, uh, not to throw them under the bus. I just, I think it's great in the off season to have a little bit of that, but once you're in prep, I don't think that's, since this is a best food podcast, I feel like it's not the best food. I, I totally agree in, in the fact that, you know, every once in a while I have a client who can put that stuff in and it's incredibly regimented, disciplined, it's weighed out. It doesn't trigger them to want more and so forth. And I, I, I cannot tell them to take that out. They're doing fine. Other people whether it's just inaccuracy in weighing, it's that extra little nibble or something there, it's just lethal to a diet. And as it, you're exactly right. As soon as we pull stuff like that out and go to more measurable whole food sources, it's, it's like magic. And so, yeah, you know, in my dieting days, those were certainly some things I just could not trust myself with. Um, and I just think for most people, you, you you do want to focus on quality, but I do want to say with, with some of the saturated fat craze that comes in and out and you need beef, you need egg yolks, you need saturated fats to make testosterone, not true. Uh, and fat can be too high. So when fat gets about 20% or less or 40% or more in both directions, testosterone starts to go down. So I, I think this is a place where you have to decide is 20, 25, 30% of fat. And that's a, that's a big difference from 20 to 30%, you know, 20 to 25, is that a place where you feel okay? So you're still getting more carbohydrate in your diet, or do you feel better with 25 to 30, 35%? And I have a client every once in a while who does, they're like, I just don't like carbs as much. If I keep my fat up to 60, 65 grams a day, I feel better. And then they can afford those kind of options. And that's just very preferential. Yeah, absolutely. Usually there's a lot more to it than that, but if someone struggles with digestion, usually a little bit higher fat might be better, but that's the most minuscule move you can make. You want to see source what's going on in the body um, to really 
solve that issue. Um, I actually try to do all those things before I try to just raise their fat because I'm like you. I would like to keep their fats lower if I if I can. Well, I will also say I'm going to push back and say I still use flaxseed oil in my oatmeal almost every day simply because it is so high in omega-3 and I'm not getting a lot of fat. I don't eat beef, you know, more than once or twice a week. Don't eat egg yolks that often, maybe once or twice a week. So I actually do better with a little bit more fat, you know, just a moderate amount. And if I'm, and I'm not eating, you know, peanut butter every day. So if, if I do that, I do see a little bit of a difference and it's reflected in my blood work. Um, you're right that fish oil is fine, but then you get into mercury toxicity potentially and things like that. And just, you know, taking handfuls of fish oil capsules or something versus, some flax that I can put in yogurt or something. I, I still feel, and I don't think it's just because I'm a child of the eighties and nineties, um, that there's bias there. It's, it's, it's just, to me, it's a good little habit that you can maintain if you can fit that into your diet. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys, we are going to switch gears and talk about some of the process oriented stuff. So stay with us for episode four by process. I don't mean processed foods. I mean, how to make sure you're getting the best foods in your prep. We'll see you then.